three months before his case came to trial, Richard Barry was under observation at Willettstown State Hospital. He was not hard to find. They seldom are. But once the crisis is passed, complete forgetfulness is not uncommon. And in this case, the case of a former patient, I could be reasonably sure that no force would be necessary. The men who had to do the job couldn't quite believe me. Here was a man who needed help, who was my patient had asked to be confined. But society acts only after a crime has been committed. After they brought him to me, I encouraged him to tell me more about it. We start at the beginning. From the way Richard spoke of first finding the cottage, it was clear to me that he had immediately started to act out his daydreams, to play house. He was already clearly unable to tell the difference between his dreams and reality. Poochie, you gave me a scare. Don't you know it's rude to interrupt people when they're eating? Clients, would you like Poochie to join us? Eleanor, you like Poochie to join us? We have a home now. Every family should have a dog. Her family were his family.
Richard Barry, 716 East 43rd Street, New York City. Married? No. I'm sorry, it's not for rent. I'm not interested in renting it to a single fellow who's going to use it as a party place and ruin everything, much less an artist. Oh, I assure you, sir. Well, you've got it all wrong. This is for my family. Oh, well, that's a different story. Much too nice a place to rent to the wrong sort of people. We could furnish you with references if you'd like. After all, they're my closest friends in a... Friends? I thought you said family. Well, we're just like a family. We're very close. Eleanor, Louisa, and their mother, Florence. Florence Hackett. Oh, oh, I see. Well, now, before we draw up the lease, I'd like you to leave me a small deposit of, say, $50, and I'll hold the place for you. All right. Naturally, I don't have that much money with me now. Okay, well, you come back then with your friends and we'll sign the lease. Uh, that is, if the cottage isn't rented in the meantime. If it isn't rented, but I've already reserved it. I'd be glad to reserve the cottage for you when you make me a deposit of $50. I'm not in this business for my health. Look, sir, I understand your position. I have a little money with me. Perhaps you'll take that as evidence of my good faith. Here. Here's about $7. It may seem strange, but when I want something, I sometimes am a little hasty on how I go about it. Will you take the $7 and hold it for me until tomorrow night? Not for you, for your friends. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you mind if I give you just $6? I don't have enough money for train fare back. Sure, Sonny. Now, take it easy. Here's your receipt. And, uh, Sonny, if you decide you haven't got friends, I'll be happy to give you back your six bucks. But, Louise, I told him it would all be in this evening. You didn't say anything to me about going out. Just for dinner, Mother. I'm sending Chubb home early. I'm beat. But can't you listen for just a few minutes? Eleanor and I haven't even let him tell us about it. We were waiting for you. Oh, all right. Come on. Just like that. It's only Richard, Mother. He's a man, nevertheless. Oh, all right. If you say so. Come on. Let's get it over with. So what's the story on the cottage? Well... In the first place, it's just a few miles outside of Fort Turn Hill. that thing down. I can't hear over it. I'll get it up. Well, I happen to be walking along. I know this sounds silly, but it was just like a ray of sunshine just broke through the clouds and pointed out this cottage to me. Very interesting. But how many rooms does it have? How much is it? Well, there's plenty of room. And there's a porch that has a view of infinity. It's all by itself. It's just a place for you, really, if there ever was one. It sounds all right, but I wonder... You wonder what? I wonder if it's just the right location for us. For us? <sighs> well, maybe. But you haven't even seen the place, for one thing. And for another, it seems to me you should speak for yourself about matters like this. After all, this Florence and Ellen ought to be heard from, too, you know. Of course, kid. That goes without saying, I think. It's for all of us to decide. And no business of mine to butt in, I suppose. For Pete's sake. Richard, Richard, don't act like a child. Don't be silly. And you, too, Louisa. It's a wonderful beach, Louisa. You'd have it all to yourself, you know. There'd be no neighbors to snoop and pry. You could do just about anything you wanted on that beach, anything. What are you getting at now, honey? What on earth would I want to do on a beach besides swim or sunbathe, maybe? Well, isn't that just what I mean, darling? Only there. Well, if you girls were alone on the beach together, or you had some friends down, and later on in the evening you decided to go for a swim, Well, you know. It's the place for you, really, if there ever was one. You'll have me down occasionally, I hope. 
maybe we could work out some sort of an arrangement. I don't know if you know it, but I'm quite a handy man. That's Chubb. He would be on time. Mother, can you help me? Eleanor, you better let him in. Mother, do you realize what we're getting into? What do you mean? I suppose that little bit about his being a handyman completely escaped you. Of course not, but I don't see anything wrong with it. What do people call you, Barry? Dick or Rick or what? Just Richard. Or Mr. Barry. Well, my name is Charles, but everyone calls me Chubb. Mother, when are you going to grow up? A complete stranger starts talking to you in a grocery store, and three weeks later, you're ready to let him move in with us. What kind of work do you do, commercial? My work is good, Mr. Bassett. I don't consider so-called commercial art art at all. Anyone can draw women with overlong legs and distorted hips, everything. Even as he told me this incident, Richard was still angry at Chubb. To Richard, all questions were an attempt to spy on him. He especially resented anything that forced him to face the fact that he did not make his living as an artist. Hello. Hey, honey, you look wonderful. But it was so terribly inconsiderate, Richard, so thoughtless. The least you could have done was the telephone. I told you, Jenny, I had to see the real estate man. It was a favor for the Hackett's. Are you sure it was a favor they wanted done, Richard? Are you sure you're not riding for a fall? I don't know what you're talking about. What I mean, Richard, is that ever since you met Florence Hackett and her family, you've been getting more and more involved with them and more and more irresponsible towards me and your job. Coming in here today an hour and a half late. Jenny. You're not jealous, are you, Jenny? Come on, Jenny, you know how I feel about you. You're my only family, Jenny. Why don't you do as the doctor suggested? Get out and meet people. Make new friends. Give yourself a chance. Don't just get bogged down with the hack. Why don't you call that fellow you met in art class? You know the one. John Campbell? That's the one I mean. Now look, I'm going to lunch now. Uh, and I won't be more than half an hour. You can make a date for one o'clock, all right? All right. All he can do is say no, Richard. He can't bite you. Simple advice, call up a friend. May I speak to John Campbell? That's all right, I'll call back later. He called me instead. Had the situation changed, I had to say no. But I promised to keep trying. I told him I would write him a letter telling him exactly how things stood. He told me nothing of his plans for the summer. That would make a wonderful studio! Maybe, but I'll know better when I get out of these hot clothes and take a dip in the water. 
That's a good idea. You do just that. Oh, that's for me. Well, why are you doing that? Eleanor and I will be cleaning up and moving in. It wouldn't be right to move into a place with other people's dirt still in it. Gee, it looks clean enough to me. Well, it's not just the dirt. The important thing with a place like this is to make it your own, to stamp it with your own personality. That, my young and frightfully uneducated helpmate, is the goddess Sandra. Oh. Someday it'll be worth more than a whole bungalow. Now, a little more and I'll be finished. Well, I beat you, because I'm finished now. Would you help me down, Richard? I love the sound of rain at night, don't you? No, I hate it. Hems you in. Makes you feel like you can't breathe or something. See, when you see if it's slacked off, you can open the window a little. I can't. It's stuck. Oh, never mind. I'll be finished here in a minute. Richard, I, I think I, I'd better be going to bed. I don't know where you two get the energy. I'm absolutely done in. I'm tired, too. I think we should all sleep late tomorrow. You'll be using the front bedroom, it should. I've laid out your things on the bed. My, didn't that turn out? You did out? what? I just got you settled in your room, that's all. Did you take anything out of my police? But just your pajamas. Lawrence, I want you to understand one thing. You're never to touch my personal things again. Why, Richard, I had no intent. What did I do? Well, you didn't do a thing, Mother. It's just that Richard isn't used to any special attention. Willettstown State Hospital, Willettstown, New York. Dear Mr. Barry, I'm glad to hear that you're getting along much better than you expected. I'm sorry to have to tell you, however, that as far as this institution is concerned, I have been unable to get a change in the rules which would allow me to treat you. I have not given up trying to find you private treatment, but in view of your financial condition, I need more time. Please keep in touch with me. I hope by the fall to find someone. Sincerely, J.G. Abernathy, staff psychiatrist. Castle is under attack. about your things being in the guest room. I heard her laying down the law to mom. It's supposed to be kept free for chub.
Wait here, I'll be right back. He was up working late with Eleanor. And he knew no one was expected this weekend. That's just it, Mother. He'll always know, and we'll always have him on our hands. Don't you think you're being just a little ungracious, Louisa? After all, if it weren't for Richard, we wouldn't even have this cottage. Look, Mother, I don't mind sharing expenses with you, and I'm happy to double up with Eleanor, but all this nonsense... Welcome to the cottage, Louisa. I bet it was hot in New York. Why don't you change and have a swim? I had an idea that would make us all more comfortable, Florence. Well, perhaps later. It Richard. occurred to me that the guest room is no place for me. I'd only be underfoot there. I think Louisa should have it for whatever purposes she wishes. Thank you. I can make a perfect little studio out of the, the shed. I'll just move in my army cotton easel and be all set up. That way, I'll be on hand for anything you may need, and at the same time, well, I won't be in anybody's way. That's a terrific idea, Richard. You can come out every weekend. You really are a darling, Richard, to think of the shed. Isn't he, Louisa? Oh, he's more than a darling, Mother. He's a doll. Richard remembered his first few weekends at the cottage with real pleasure. I had to teach Florence to swim, he said. We got along fine. But from other things he mentioned, it was clear that some tensions were developing even then. I was surrounded by women's things. They were very messy. I was forever fixing things. But it was fine. I was shaping them, building a home for them, our home. But there was plenty of time for fun. Eleanor was wonderful, everything a sister should be. And then he chuckled at some more private memory. You know, Doctor, a man's home is his castle. And most important, I was working. Painting, I mean. Then his voice would change. Of course, that Louisa. Things were going on. Florence acted as if she didn't see. But I saw. But there was so much to do. I remember one Saturday, we were working on an outdoor fireplace. <laughs> it's fine, Florence. Just a few more and we'll be all set. My back. You don't realize, Richard, my poor, poor back. Because it wouldn't take any time at all if everybody helped. Just a dime, folks. The old Simon Legree worked those poor old gentlefolks nigh to death. What's the hurry, kid? I thought the whole idea in coming down here was to have some fun, among other things. Me, I'm going for a swim. <laughs> I may not be a gentlefolk. I may be just a nobody. Now, Richard, let's not all have tantrums. Richard, be careful. You almost hit Eleanor. Well, I mean, don't you see what she was getting at, Florence? That I'm just a nobody? Somebody without a dime? I shouldn't even be here. Well, she... My dear Richard, she meant nothing of the sort, and you know it. All she meant was that she was going for a swim. I know what she meant. That witch. Look at her. On a stage, in her cage. That peacock. Look how she flaunts herself. I'm ten cents a dime, nothing. 
I could show her. Ruin my fireplace, will she? That's it, Hyde. Run away. But I can see you. I can see right through you, darling. Louise, as I told you before, you better put some suntan lotion on. You're getting red. I am at that. Eleanor, see if you can dig out the suntan oil. Hey, you get it all messy. Help me put it on, will you? I'm eating. Richard will. Come on, Richard. You do my back, and I'll do yours. Careful of my strap here. Wait a minute. There. Come on, Richard. Really put it on. You won't hurt me. That's it. Here, now I'll do you. Never mind. I don't need any. Okay. Do it yourself. Louisa, is that any way for a young lady to dress in front of a gentleman? Really, Mother, there's only Richard, and I'm sure he doesn't mind. Mother, I'm sure Chubb must be hungry. Please, not on my account. I had a late lunch in the city today. Oh, I'm concerned. The next time a little tact is in order, and Colin civility. Richard. Florence, another one of your wonderful dinners. That walk certainly gave me an appetite. Oh, where were you? We were worried. Well, uh, I know it sounds kind of foolish, but I... I just kept walking and walking. I didn't realize how late it was. And I must have been a couple of miles down the beach when I noticed it was getting late and I turned back. Well, that's not so unusual. It's hard to judge distances when you're walking along the beach. Hello, Chubb. I'm glad you could get out. It's good to see you again. Thanks, Richard. You too. Well, I feel better now that I've got my whole family around me. begin my most important project, the family portrait. Thanks for standing in for me, Chubb. It helps compose the picture. I'm afraid I don't know you well enough yet, Chubb, to paint you. And you know me well enough? When I finish your portrait, you can see for yourself. You've been in long enough. 
Doc. Your feet will turn blue. Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? You know, you're a lot of fun when you're not serious. Why can't you be that way more often? I can with you, Eleanor. Not with everybody. Most people don't understand. I understand. You do. Hey, let's walk up the beach a little ways. I want to show you something. Okay. My feet are beginning to feel again. <laughs> I like the way you sink down. The way the sand feels between your toes? No, I mean the way your feet sink down until you feel like you're planted solid. Then you begin to feel that you belong. Neither the ocean, the wind, or the waves can say move on. Well, you never told me you were in the war, Richard. Oh, that must have been gruesome. I mean, the Army's bad enough. Well, I didn't mind the Army so much. At least they took care of you there. They told you what to do and where to be, and if you weren't there, they'd... Well, they'd... They'd yell at you and get mad as if they cared about you. Cared? And then they'd put you out there all alone. They'd tell you to kill or be killed. You knew you were all alone. Then you knew they didn't care about you. They'd kill you if they could. Well, who's they? Well, you know them, everybody. Richard, we can keep out of the wind here. Where were you? In Italy? No. In the Pacific? No, never mind. Sorry I said anything. I'm cold. We'd better go back. Oh, don't get up. They'll see you. Oh. Again. Don't cry, Eleanor. You don't love me. I do. I care for you very much. More than anybody else, but in a real way. You're like my own flesh and blood. <laughs> but I'm not. But when two people are close, they... They shouldn't spoil their feelings by acting just like everybody else. You know, I, I guess they shouldn't. But why did you push me away? That's just why. I didn't want us to get started in the wrong way. But what did I do? It wasn't what you did. It was me. Don't... Don't let me spoil it. I'm still cold. Let me keep you warm. That's the way it should be. Both of us helping each other. Keeping each other warm against the outside. Hi. Well, it's about time. What were you and Richard doing? I've been in for hours. We were talking. So I see. Was it fun? I don't know. Hey, 
Have you been crying? It's nothing. If that character tried anything, I'll have his ears cut off. Oh, no, it, it wasn't anything like that. It's, it's just that I don't think he feels the way I do. Tell me all about it, honey. Now you're making fun of me. No, I'm not. Darling, you don't want to get involved with Richard. I think there's something wrong with him. You've seen the way he flies off the handle. And so if you're going to be mean, I just won't listen. I'm sorry, honey. That was mean. If you think Rich is the guy for you, okay. I'll even help. Would you, Louisa, honestly? Of course, sweetheart. Now, lesson number one in handling men is that you can't let them be too sure of you, right? Oh, I guess so. And the first thing we have to do is show Richard that if he doesn't care, there are others who do. But who? I'll have Chubb bring you a date next week and we'll go out as a foursome. Oh, I don't know. Richard might get mad. Look, honey, most men don't know what they want until somebody tries to take it away from them. You leave it to me. But, well, if you're sure. I'm sure. You're late. Oh, too late. Late enough so you'll go without your lunch to make up for it. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenny. I, I can't today. I have some shopping to do. And I have a business to run. Now, look here, Richard. I know that when I ask you to open the shop early in the morning, I'm asking you to do something I don't like to do myself. But frankly, except for that, there's not much else I need you for, is there? You're right, Jenny. You're absolutely right. That's one reason I decided to take my vacation now instead of later. And just where do you propose to get the money? Well, I don't need much. I thought maybe you could give me a little advance. Richard, listen to me. I know you're planning to stay with the Hackett's. You've completely disregarded my advice, and you've been with them every moment you could. It's none of your business. Very well, take your vacation. But if you do, there'll be no job here. I refuse to be responsible for you. Nobody's asking you to. And what's more, I'm going to call the Hackett's and tell them about you. I should have long ago. Then we'll see. You won't tell them. Will you, Jenny? You wouldn't. They'd never let me come see them again. Richard, take your hands off me at once. Now, this instant. Richard! Please, Jenny. Please. I tell you, I'm all right. Don't turn the only friends I have against me. Richard, you're not all right. Don't you see that? Please, Jenny. Believe me, Richard, I'm only trying to help you. I know you are, Jenny. I tried. I fought against it. I know you have. Richard, I'm going to let you take your vacation now on one condition, that you take it at Green Hills Farm. It's a wonderful place, run by some friends of mine. Will you go? I don't have any money. I'll take care of that. Now, if I give you this, will you go to Green Hill Farms today? Yes, I'll go. Good. Now, here. I'll call and make your reservations. You go and get packed now. Hurry up. Thank you. I love you, Jenny. So remember, next time, why don't you ask for a fire glow shampoo, for hair that sparkles, for a grand and glorious, glamorous new you. Use fire glow, the shampoo the stars use. Doggone it. Two seconds over. 
perfect otherwise. Maybe we could cut grand and glorious and get right down to for a glamorous new you. So what do we do? Retake? Now let's try it your way. Phone home and see if we can get an upstairs okay on dropping grand and glorious. And hurry. The crew's on overtime as it is. Yes, sir. He's fun. How long has he been in this racket? Not long enough. He's still got a sense of humor. Why, are you interested? Yeah, for Eleanor. She's been seeing so much of Richard lately that I'm worried. Here's where we separate the men from the boys, huh? You're so right. Well, it probably can be arranged, but there's just one thing. What? Matchmaking is supposed to be done by young married couples. I'm not making a match. I'm unmaking one. Touche. What's the verdict? Guilty. Grand and glorious stage. Okay, people. Sorry, we'll have to take that again. That was a little too long. I wanted to surprise you. Well, you did that all right. I wasn't expecting you at all today. I would have wired you or something, only things happen so fast. You don't have to worry about me. I have my studio. Well... I'm afraid, Richard, it's going to be a little awkward. You see... I know what you mean. You don't have to worry about the extra expense for the food and everything. I thought about that. Here's my share of the food. I think there's enough there to take care of part of the rent, too. Why, Richard, how thoughtful. I couldn't think of taking it. I got it for you. No. I do love you for thinking of it, but that's not what I was worried about. You see, Louisa has invited two young men out. Two? Isn't one enough for her? <laughs> Don't be silly, Richard. Chubb is bringing a friend with him to make up a foursome. They're picking up the girls at the beauty parlor. What Kirk girls? Was... Louise and Eleanor, of course. Florence. You're not going to let Eleanor go out with somebody you don't even know. A total stranger. Now, Richard, she's not going off with some total stranger. After all, he's a friend of Chubb's, and Chubb and Louise are going along. Well, that's just it. Chubb and Louise, they're no good for Eleanor. Don't you see what's going on? In heaven's name, Richard, what are you getting so excited about? Two sisters going off together is the most natural thing in the world. Florence, don't you know what's happening? I'll give you a break on these. A dollar fifty. Say, you must be planning quite a party. Well, I guess you'd call it a reception. Yeah, that's a reception. Richard Barry cordially invites you to a gala thank you party in honor of the Hackett's. Eight o'clock this evening, main dining salon. Please be prompt. There they are. So that's who she brought for Eleanor. And look at Eleanor. Look what she's done to her hair. But if Louisa thinks she can break up this family, she's in for a surprise. That's it, Florence. Come on. Give out my invitations. Come on. That'll show her who's boss. I'll be the host. You thought you could pull something, didn't you, Louisa? You thought you could put me on the outside. But I'm the one who's doing the inviting. It's my party and my home. I'm just too smart for you, darling. Just a lot too smart. Well, it's 
been a lovely party, Richard. But I'm afraid I have to go. I told the Simmonses that I'd walk over later and visit with them. Oh, but Florence, we're just starting. Don't go yet. I'm afraid I have to. You young people enjoy yourselves. I'm going to visit some neighbors for a while. I hate to see you go, Mrs. Haggard. Bye, Mother. Well, good night then, Fred. It's been a pleasure having you. You must come out again real soon. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Haggard. Thanks for everything. Take good care of my daughter. Now's our chance to shake Richard. We'll all make our exit. I think we'll all be going now, Richard. Well, you can't go yet. We haven't had the pièce de résistance. Crepe Suzette's. Oh, Crepe Suzette. Watch. You have to heat it first. There you are. We really have to be going, Richard. It's been a wonderful party. Good night, Richard. Thanks. Richard, don't you want to come too? No. I'll stay and finish these. Her lipstick, Louisa, that witch. Hey, Freddy, have a heart. One or the other, but not both at once. Well, you wouldn't want to deprive me of one of my minor vices, would you? For this, we ditch Richard. Don't talk like that. You'll make me ashamed of myself. We were pretty crude.
degrade Eleanor. I draw this line, and beyond it, he shall not pass. If anything should happen, don't blame me. Don't blame me, darling. I saw a light. Probably a lighthouse. Or a light from the Connecticut shore. Richard! Richard! Mother, really, you getting the jitters or something? Richard's probably asleep. Well, maybe you'll feel more comfortable if I have a look around. Oh, no, please. You, you have a long drive back. Don't make me seem any sillier than I am. <laughs> oh, good night, Mrs. Hackett. Oh, good night, Fred. Good night, Eleanor. See you again. Good night, Freddie. Sure. Good night. Good night, good night Chum. Good night, Chum. Be careful driving back. glass. I didn't hear anything. Well, I dropped it, whether you heard it or not. Did I wake you? Were you sleeping? What are you doing here? We well, don't seem very pleased to see me. Perhaps I'd better go back. Well, I was just thinking. Well, what are you doing out here? I'm guarding the place. What are you talking about? Well, Florence is worried, isn't she? Oh. 
But you're not worried, though, are you, Richard? You're the one who's in the cottage, aren't you? Turning on the lights and messing up our rooms. And I know why, too. But you didn't have to be mad. I don't like that, Freddy. He's too smart, Alex. Did you tell anyone else about this? About what? About the lights. No, why should I? I knew it was you. It was you, wasn't it, Richard? Richard, don't you think you should say something once in a while? You were sitting in the moonlight, and you just sit there and let me do all the talking. doing? It's all right, go to sleep. You dressed? What time is it? It's late. I just had to get a drink of water. Well, we were wondering about you. Do you know what time it is? Time? What time? It's time for breakfast, of course. It's past 11 o'clock. We've all been up for hours, but there's coffee and everything still if you want some. I don't want any breakfast. But don't be silly. Of course you want breakfast. Richard, listen, I, I think you ought to. Ought to what? You ought to have breakfast, of course. It will look strange if you don't. A lot of strange things around here. Meaning what? Meaning everything, darling. I'll talk to you later. I want to talk to you, Richard. I'm going to have some coffee. You can have coffee later. I want to talk to you now. And I want to talk to you too, darling. Look, Richard, don't you think it's going a little too far when you take advantage of Eleanor? She's nothing but a child. And you, well, you're supposed to be a grown man. What got into you? What got into me? What got into you? Don't you think I know that you're the one that put her up to it? 
Don't you think I know what you've been doing, trying to trap me? You. You with your boyfriends loving up and down the beach. You tramp, you. Richard! Yes, I said tramp. I know what kind of a tramp you are. Are you afraid to hear me say it? I know one thing. I know that no man can speak that way to a daughter of mine and remain in the same house with us without an apology and an explanation. Poor Florence. Poor silly Florence. of settling down here. That's all? I have a business in New York. I was thinking of buying a little place here, maybe building. You know, somewhere along the beach. Was it not too crowded? Well, you can find places out here to be quiet in, all right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Like I say, if you want to be alone, you can find it out here, that's all. Maybe that's what you need, mister. Maybe that's what you need. I assume you've come to apologize. Apologize for what, darling? Richard, I'm a woman of considerable experience. But the things you said this morning in my presence are such things as... as I've never before heard a gentleman address to a lady. A lady? I beg your pardon. I beg yours. I shall try once more. Because you're so obviously at the moment not yourself. I don't know what it is, Richard, that's troubling you. But whatever it is, it can hardly explain your actions of this morning. And this to a family who have gone out of their way to befriend you. Made a home for you. Treated you practically as a son or a brother. Has it occurred to you that it was me who found this place? Me who brought you here? Me who made the arrangements? If you stop to think of it, darling, it's as much my place as it is yours. Maybe more. I can only repeat to you what I said this morning. No one, no one can remain in my house or use the language you did to Louisa. I suggest to you, Richard, and if necessary, I shall do more than suggest it, that you leave this house today. It might surprise you to find out that I own this house.
course, dear, that's possible, but then Eleanor thought she saw him. You said yourself you weren't sure. I know. Well... Anyway, you lock the door. Look, Mother. What do you want? You want me to come down or what? I don't know. I really don't know, Louisa. You don't know. Well, for crying out loud, then. Look, Mother, I'll be down tonight or anyway tomorrow. Probably tomorrow on the early train. Look, why don't you get the Simmons boy to come over and spend the night tonight? Will you be all right tonight if I don't get there until tomorrow? Yes. We'll be all right tonight. That's all I need. But I don't understand. I put him on the train Friday. Yes, of course. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. It's all right. Nothing serious, I'm sure. When I phoned you this afternoon, you sounded pretty worried. Yours. Two martinis, very dry. That fella is pretty crazy, you know. Now, don't you go getting steamed up about him, too. I'm not, kid, only... Well, they'd be pretty helpless out there by themselves. Oh, you don't think that he could... Well, I don't know. I suppose not really, but that kind... He was a little on the feminine side, wasn't he? I don't know what you're talking about. Let's have our drinks. Forget about it. Don't fool around, Simmons. I promise your mother I'd let you up early so you can get to the hackets before dark. You're still pretty worried, aren't you, baby? It's what you said a few minutes ago. They would be helpless by themselves. Look, honey, would you mind terribly if I ran out on you tonight and went down there? I'd mind if you tried to do it that way. A waiter, check, please. Mother, what time is the Simmons boy coming? I don't know, dear. But he promised me he'd be here before it got dark. Well, I know it may sound silly, but... Don't you think we ought to lock the doors? I mean, even Louisa said that... It's a very good idea, darling. As a matter of fact, I'll do that this very night. For all we know, we're knocking ourselves out on a wild goose chase. I hope we are.
Is that you, Roger? Yes, I'm Roger. I suppose it's silly locking up this. I just thought I'd drop in. Yes, Richard, so I see. I have a right to, you know. I, I don't know about rights. Oh, I do. I was the first to come here. I found this place. I found it. Do you deny that? No. You take it. You take no. it over. You take me over, too. You did. Why, well, you tried to. But you couldn't. Not even setting your own daughter on you without the rest of it. You couldn't, then you drove me out. Oh, don't think I didn't know what you were up to, Florence. Did you think I didn't know? If you think you could manage that... Well, it is, Richard. There's no need to get excited. There, there's no sense to it, really, Richard. Sit down, won't you, please? Are you telling me what to do? Of course not, Richard. No one's trying to do that. I'm glad you came, Richard. No one drove you out, you know. That's just your imagination. And there's no sense at all in the way you're acting now. No sense at all. As I told Louisa, the first thing... Louisa? Is she here? Of course not. She's in New York, but I talked to her this morning, and she's coming out. She may come out tonight, and when she does, we'll all sit down. Hi, folks. West Marines to the rescue. <laughs> See what you made me do? You see what you drive me to? You made me do this. Clean and pure. I have to. Can't help it, I have to. No shamming now. No shamming. <laughs> was not hard to find. They seldom are. For once the crisis has passed, complete forgetfulness is not uncommon. And in this case, the case of a former patient, I could be reasonably sure that no force would be necessary. The men who had to do the job couldn't quite believe me. I have not given up trying to find you private treatment, but in view of your financial condition, I need more time. Please keep in touch with me. I hope to find someone by the fall. But you know, you must know you can't keep me here much longer. I told you, get Florence Hackett. She'll tell you who I am. Why don't you get Florence Hackett?